I, I would say something that really stuck out to me the more I watched the film is is how much Dorothy Valens is really kind of at the heart of the film. Mm -hmm. You know, I know Roger Ebert, for example, has criticized Lynch's treatment of Isabella Rossellini, and others have criticized Lynch's treatment of women. In many ways, though, I think it's precisely because Isabella Rossellini is, is subjected to such brutal treatment, and the fact that her, her brutality is never really fully acknowledged it's constantly being undercut with these kind of corny jokes like, hey, is that your mom? Right. It, it almost makes her trauma much stronger because it's never allowed to be, to kind of be expressed and therefore resolved. It kind of lingers unresolved throughout the course of the film. Yep. And I think in many ways it, it forms the, the traumatic center of the film. Well, you know, when she's, after she's brought in, when, after she's been wandering around uh, naked and, and she goes into the house... The major concern becomes that Sandy has realized that they've slept together, and now it's about her trauma and her her feelings about the whole thing, rather right. than, hey, Dorothy's in a really bad way here. Yeah, she's never really acknowledged as as much of a person. I yeah. mean, she's really only valued as a mother at the end of the film, and I mean, to some extent, as an entertainer, mm -hmm. as a nightclub singer. And you know, some have argued that she is a, a much more compelling main character than Jeffrey himself. I have a quote from Matthew Ng where he says, quote, although Jeffrey is scripted by Lynch and performed by Kyle MacLachlan as a quintessential male hero, he is easily the film's blandest creation, a grown and guileless boy scout coerced by perverse suburban curiosity into situations of real menace that lead him to sincerely, verbally wonder why is there so much trouble in this world? But this purposely vanilla depiction of a technically centralized male lead primarily serves as an entryway for Lynch to introduce Blue Velvet's actual point of interest, Dorothy Valens, the knife-swinging, torch-song-singing enigma of the film, end quote. Well, in many ways, I think Jeffrey Beaumont is a passerby who stumbles into Dorothy Valens' movie. Yeah, like Dorothy right. Valens is the main character of her movie, but we're following the the hapless, naive boy who just happens to walk into it. And I think by presenting her kind of trauma from the point of view of Jeffrey makes this a, a movie that's much more kind of about the American way of dealing with trauma. Because it is kind of always mediated by this, this sense of idealism, mm -hmm. by this naivety, by this supposed sense of innocence. It's never handled, you know, directly, full on. And I think if you had made a movie where it was very much about Dorothy Valens and her trauma, it becomes much more of almost like the psychology of being brutalized, of rape. Yeah. You know, it becomes much more of almost a, a sociological analysis of, of rape victims rather than how trauma itself tends to be kind of denied and, and repressed mm -hmm. in, in the American sort of identity. Right, I guess because she's really living in that seedy underbelly and right. Jeffrey's coming at it from the idealized version of it and that is the, the lens that we are watching this movie from and then everything just feels a lot more alien and strange as a result. Very much so. Yeah. 